Um, my name is Ludwig Hiedler. I'm winemaker of the Hiedler Winery, Weingut Hiedler in Austria, in the Kamptal. And we're going to take a closer look at our last vintage, which was a challenging vintage, not only because of Corona, uh, just the overall uh, weather was uh, very unusual. Again, hello, climate change, uh, but actually not hot this time. So um, I think uh, it makes sense to start in the winter uh, from pruning on and then we finish with the harvest. And so the winter was pretty much a winter that did not deserve the name winter because it was relatively mild. I wouldn't say warm, but relatively mild. Usually we have an average of I think minus one degree throughout the entire day. So in the month is from December till February. Um, that winter was, I think, almost two, two degrees warmer in, on average than usual, which is not a problem per se. Just, you know, the colder it is, uh, and if you have like minus five, minus 10, minus 15, then you get the soil freezing. And so also the non-beneficial organisms uh, won't survive the winter, which was always a big advantage we had here. And we already see uh, how some some uh, insects that usually were not a problem or even considered as beneficial organisms, they're now there in like so many numbers that yeah, very unusual. Like the, I don't know how you call them in English. We call them orbulum, ear crawler, ear worm. Ear, we call them ear wigs. Ear wigs. Oh, yeah, I think we talked about it already. Ear wigs. So for example, the ear wigs. But well, it, it, it got cold at the end of March, which was something or is something that we're observing in the last couple of years. So end of March, like really, really cold, uh, colder than usual. And then temperatures rise again. And so from end of March, uh, the I think we had like on average minus three degrees or so. The temperatures rose again to, I think at Easter Monday in April, we even had uh, Easter Sunday, we even had 25 degrees Celsius, which is like summer temperatures. And so butt break um, started around the 12th of April. And it was very irregular, very irregular butt break this, this year, I observed. So actually from the end of uh, mid of April till the end of April, um, you had already like some, some buds that just opened up at the end of April when some shoots already had like the five leaf stadium. So that was, uh, that was strange. And well, that was one of the things that is, I think, crucial for this vintage because we also saw then different physiological ripeness till the harvest. Um, not necessarily bad, but actually was a, a, a good thing. Um, and then uh, was pretty dry again, the, the spring. I mean, winter was a bit over average, uh, the, uh, the precipitation. And then throughout the month of March, April uh, was very dry and very windy. So, you know, with all the wind and the warm weather, the like water evaporates pretty quickly out of the soil. We do have everything with cover crop. Um, we had, I think, a few vineyards where we opened the soil a little bit to work in the, the biomass and the compost, but not everywhere. And we're trying to keep the soils closed since, since 2018, because 18 was like a, a good lesson for us just overall very dry. So thinking about what you can do to minimize that. But then everything changed and uh, we got quite some rain for in, in May and June. So also during the flowering, uh, it was uh, 
relatively rainy but moderate climate like pretty much average and normal and uh, no we didn't have any problems for flowering good flowering um, then the going into the summer uh, was already again thinking okay thank god we got some rain because it's gonna be dry again as it was in most europe but uh, for us, it was actually one of the wettest years uh, in a long time. I think since 2010 it was the wettest year this year. And um, so summer we got almost 25%, uh, ah, almost half of 50% of, of what we usually get throughout the entire year. We got in July and August. So there was enough water reservoir uh, available for the vines were growing beautifully and the temperatures were very mild. It was, you remember when we were sitting outside in May last time, what was that when we were talking? So that was uh, almost the temperature that we kind of kept throughout the entire summer, like between 25 and 32 degrees which is very normal for for Austrian or Kamptar summer. Um, not like 18 or, or what was 2006 where we had like super hot summers. So that was beautiful. I loved the summer. It was everything green, a lot of water there, really full of life, things crawling around everything full of flowers really nice summer after so many uh, dry years that was uh, something I enjoyed and it was calm you know corona so you had really time to to look at everything it was I, I enjoyed it last year and uh, so the rain kept on and on and on it was like spread over several uh, days so it was not like one big rain event and then like drought for a month and uh, we didn't have any problems to be honest with uh, plant protection i even did this year um, the, my first experiment of copper free plant protection so just working with um, uh, sulfur and uh, a herbal extract and uh, that worked very well very well and i think i only only did seven spraying, seven applications, and didn't have any problems with, even though the, the year was like pressure was there because it was wet for Perlinospora and, and Oedium, mildew, but it was very nice. And this year I'm gonna do half of the, half of our entire vineyard area that way. And then we went into picking. So picking, even though the bud break was early, uh, picking was late because the summer was uh, mild and water was there. And so we started with the main picking end of September. So just really an old school vintage, <laughs> I would say in Austria. So for the early, uh, the early or the basic uh, quality, so to say the, the easy wines with lower alcohol, uh, it's when we started end of September and by early to mid October that was all, all finished and we did the transition to single vineyards. Um, only thing and that was probably the wettest harvest we ever had, at least I from my experience, right? My first harvest was 2010. And that was a wet, a wet harvest, but not as wet as 2020, which means one thing that it was a challenging harvest. So it was not easy, not an easy, easy year in, in that perspective. Um, so by the end of, of August, everything looked just perfect because of all the, all, all the conditions we had. And then it was, you know, the saturation with water was already there. And the beginning of September with another big rain event uh, as every year. And that was starting, you know, come too much. And I think from 
end of September till mid of October, we we well we had many rain days and quite some rain, which was surprisingly more a problem for Grüner Veltliner this year, um, because Grüner Veltliner was a bit behind with sugar ripeness, so. Uh, in some cases where we where we where we got to try this just because the berries would pop open in, in some cases it was not a good to try this and you know that we uh, we do work with um the good to try this in, in in some vintages like last year for example 2020 uh but that was like very selective harvest very exhausting harvest and the quantities were very small. I mean, we had some frost, we had some hail throughout the vegetation, which cost us a little bit. And then we had to cut quite quite some grapes under the vine um, in the selection process. Uh, so I think we ended up with minus 25, minus 30% of, of average uh, quantity. Um, but the qualities that we got are very nice. Therefore, like for all the selective harvest, at least that paid uh, off. And we have very good concentration in the musks. Uh, they are a bit louder, the wines, I would say, than the previous three vintages. So very aromatic from what I, what I see now. And uh, the alcohol is relatively low. The acidity is a bit higher. So the wine, the, the vintage is a bit fresher. So everything fits into the old school Austrian uh, vintage kind of type. Um, and we are very happy, very happy. Only, yeah, only teardrop as we would say in, in, in Austria is that uh, the quantity is really not satisfying but uh, yeah we had previously we had good vintages so now also 2019 was fantastic and uh, uh, we so that that will help us out a little bit into the into this transition to the new vintage um, but yeah Fermentation is pretty much done. We have a few barrels that are still fermenting. Uh, I'm working with a lot of uh, lease contact this year, more than usual, um, because the lease is just very nice. And uh, due to the rain, we had super good nutrition uh, for the grapes. So they, they took all of this basically into the musk. Um, the rocky soils were a bit, obviously in the wet vintage, the rock soils, the terraces uh, were a bit better uh, from the health of the grapes compared to the less soils where we definitely had more, more loss of, of, of quantity due to the selection. Uh, also the small grape varieties uh, with thicker skin like uh, Riesling or Sauvignon Blanc, I think a bit of an advantage this year. Um, um, so that's where we saw the differences in the grapes, but I mean, all in all, despite the difficult harvest, it was uh, very good, very good, Qu quality wise, very good. As I said, I'm not, not satisfied with the quantity, but you can't have everything. And yeah, that's how a very turbulent year came to an end. I would say somehow comparable uh, in terms of difficulty or challenge during the harvest with 2014. Although 2014, we had a nicer botrytis, so we could uh, keep more. Um, and yeah, taste-wise, actually, it reminds me a bit of my first vintage. So lower alcohol, a bit higher acid, very aromatic. Um, kind of a little bit of this sweet scent right now in, in these early stages. So that's where I would uh, kind of place this vintage, so old school vintage for 
everyone who likes the this beautiful elegance and, and freshness to cleanse the palate. Um, I'm very curious how, how the wines keep evolving because looking at vintages like 2010, they're actually, you know, the difficult vintages that when they're young, at least in Austria, people tend to talk them down uh, because everyone looks at the years where it's like full of sun and, 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 and no rain which obviously is easier to work with and, and makes more sense probably for someone who hears that the grape, the, the wines would be better. But from experience, vintages like 2010 just age so well. And so, yeah, difficult vintage, good aging potential. Uh, there's many, many advantages to 2020. Not, not the dream year because it was uh, a bit too wet for us during harvest. So if we could choose, we, <laughs> we would have more sun, sun during harvest. But in the end, that's also the advantage for the wine uh, in, in its very own sense. Uh, it will just carry that character into a long aging period. <laughs>